video to this series that we started on this channel. So if you guys are unfamiliar, uh, my background is actually in culinary arts. I used to teach that back home in California. And then we stumbled upon the YouTube world when I moved to Texas and now we're here. But so many of you have expressed interest in watching me cook. So today I'm gonna teach you guys how to make one of my favorite side dishes. Now, if you are a vegetarian, this could actually be a main course for you. So. We are going to be making mushroom risotto, and you guys have seen this dish make an appearance in one of my weekend vlogs before, but today I'm gonna to walk you through the process and teach you guys how I make it from start to finish. This is one of those cool dishes that is hearty, it's rich, it's a little time consuming, but it's well worth the time that it's going to take. A few disclaimers. Now, this recipe is vegetarian. However, you can make it vegan if you do use a butter substitute, a cheese substitute, and perhaps a cream substitute. We are going to be using chicken stock for the purpose of this video, but you could also use vegetable stock. Now, this dish is cool because it is a very rich and a very heavy side dish. So, it's going to create a lot of girth, in your menu if that's what you were looking for. I usually like to serve this with asabuco, which is veal shank. I may teach you how to do that one day. It takes a very long time, but oh my goodness. Um, anyway, so this dish is very creamy, very delicious. It is not a dish that freezes well. Like last video, I told you about minestrone soup. Freezes very well. This one does not. However, it does reheat very well. So if you do have leftovers, reheating it is going to be a breeze. So today we are going to make mushroom risotto together. I already prepped all of the ingredients for you guys, but I'm going to walk you through them. In summary, this dish is actually quite simple to make. There is not much prep involved. The hardest part about it is standing in front of the stove for about 30 minutes. Also, keep in mind that this is one of those dishes that you start off with these many ingredients and it turns into this much risotto. So, um, again, it is a vegetarian dish. You can make it vegan, but obviously my little vegans out there already know their awesome substitutes for several of these things. So, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna show you guys a little rundown of the ingredients that we have laid in front of us and then after that we'll get into the actual cooking process okay let's go through a rundown of the ingredients that we have in front of us right now there are a few that you cannot see which are essentials our cooking fat which is going to be avocado oil um, and salt and pepper which we never really count because we just assume we're gonna need it right so Let's go through what we have laid out here. First, we have some minced garlic, and do not be fooled by the amount that you see in front of you. So if you were to reproduce this recipe, I'm gonna have the quantities listed in the description box below. That's what you would follow. This is just um, how much I'm going to make for myself today, or rather for the week. So the quantities will not match and it will not look the same, okay? So keep that in mind. So we have a few cloves of garlic that I've minced here. Then we have one shallot that is also small diced or finely chopped. We have one bay leaf and a sprig of thyme. Here we have some dry white wine. I actually use just the generic kind that is a white cooking wine from the grocery store. It's not one that you would drink. However, if you do have a dry um, white wine in your home, like a Pinot Grigio, you could use that as well. So my local store has one that looks like this. So this is only for cooking purposes. You are not supposed to drink it. Um, I have a little um, lump of butter here that I'm going to stir in at some point. Then we have some arboreal rice. Arboreal rice is the type of rice that you use for risotto. It's the only one that holds up to so much cooking, you know, so much stirring, so much liquids. It's the only one that's short enough, chubby enough, and with enough starch that's going to be able to absorb so much liquid and turn into a really creamy dish. And then the last thing we have here are some small chopped cremini mushrooms or baby bellas. So a cremini mushroom is the same thing as a portobello except it's smaller. So you can get either or at the grocery store.
that I do not have measured out in front of me are a chicken broth. Now I'm going to use a low sodium chicken broth. You can also use a vegetable broth and actually make this recipe vegetarian or vegan. Obviously you would opt out of the butter. You would use something else just like the avocado oil that we're going to be using at the beginning. Two items that you cannot see and that I'm going to show you which will no longer make this recipe vegan unless you use alternatives or substitutes. Uh, we are going to be using a heavy whipping cream. If you can't find a whipping cream at your grocery store, you could also use half and half. Um, and then the other thing is a finely grated Parmesan cheese. These two are optional, but they completely elevate the dish and turn it into something completely I was gonna say different, but the proper word is actually better. <laughs> All right, you guys, this is gonna be the long process. Two pots on the stove. We brought a chicken broth up to a boil, and now it's at a simmer. All we're doing now is keeping it warm, and we're gonna have our ladle ready to go to ladle into this pan once our stuff is ready to go. Here, what we're gonna do is we are going to wilt down those mushrooms. We're gonna toast the arborio rice. We're gonna saute and soften the garlic and the shallot, and we're gonna do all of that with some delicious herbs. So let's go ahead and get started with this ride. My pan right now is gonna be at a medium heat. We are going to be fluctuating between medium and high, and then dropping it down to a low once we get to this step, okay? All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is put in some avocado oil in my pan, and then we're going to drop in our garlic, our shallots, and our mushrooms. Drop your heat to a medium low so that you don't burn that garlic. And we're gonna keep stirring until our mushrooms have melted down, our garlic and shallots have softened. If you like your food very seasoned or very flavored, I would go in and add the bay leaf and the thyme now. You're gonna give it a longer time to extract the essential oils and the herbs, and so your food is gonna have a stronger herby taste. If you don't like the herby taste so much, then you would add those after you've browned the rice in this mixture. you hear the sizzle drop a little bit, you can raise the temperature of your heat just a bit. After everything has softened, shrunken down, and is a delicious caramelly brown, we're going to go in with the arboreal rice. And you will probably need to add more oil so that you can get a really nice toast. You'll turn up your heat and you're going to keep stirring until you've toasted all that rice. It's gonna be a light golden color. Once the arboreal rice has turned a light golden shade, like you guys can see here, we are going to add a splash of white wine. It could be the type of dry white wine you prefer to drink, or you could just use the kind that they sell at the grocery store for just the purpose of cooking, which is what I'm using. And you'll hear that loud sizzle. That's the alcohol cooking out of the dish, which is a fun fact that a lot of people aren't aware of. When you cook with alcohol, you're not actually gonna get drunk. If you cook it to a high enough temperature like we are today, you're cooking out all the alcohol and all that remains is the flavor. So um, it's kind of a cool thing that a lot of people aren't aware of. They're like, oh, well, I don't you know, drink alcohol. Well, you're actually cooking out all of the properties and you're just kind of leaving in the delicious flavor. Now what we're gonna do is I'm going to add a pat of butter just for creaminess. Totally being extra, you do not need it. And we are going to start adding ladlefuls of stock and stirring. Ladleful, stir, let it evaporate or concentrate the flavor. Add another ladleful, stir, let it evaporate, concentrate the flavor. Another ladleful, stir. And you're just gonna keep going over and over and over until you cook your rice and 
you've used all of the broth. You can see how creamy the rice is turning. Usually when you are cooking any sort of rice, you want to avoid stirring it because you don't want to develop the starch. You don't want it to turn starchy and creamy. You want it to be fluffy, airy, and separate when you you know, take a fork to it. You want to fluff the rice. With risotto, it's the complete opposite. You want to add the stock and stir and release those starches and make it creamy. As you're stirring your risotto, if you notice that it stops bubbling, turn up your heat just a little bit and you wanna make sure that the entire time it actually has a really low bubble, just like this. That's gonna make sure that you are actually cooking out the stock, but you're not rushing the process. So we're gonna keep going. We're gonna use up all the stock. We're gonna keep stirring. Depending on your stove, where you are, if it's electric, if it's gas, the type of pot or pan you're using, it could take anywhere from 15 to 30 more minutes. So keep going until you've used up all that stock and your rice is nice and al dente. When your risotto's gotten to this point where it's almost completely absorbed all the liquid and it is al dente, which means it's still a little, it has a little give, you know, it has a little give but a little stick once you bite it. So it's not completely mush. Uh, you're going to take out the sprig of thyme and the bay leaf and you can go ahead and season with salt and pepper. I always do this at the very end because some of these chicken broths or just broths in general tend to have some salt and when you're adding it, reducing it, adding it and reducing it, it tends to concentrate the flavors. So you want to always wait till the very end so your dish doesn't end up being really salty. Another trick is Wait to finish salting until the absolute end because Parmesan cheese is also one of the saltiest cheeses and it will make your dish a little bit saltier than you would expect. So this is what the product looks like right before we're going to add our finishing touches. So right before serving, you're going to stir in the Parmesan cheese and the heavy cream. I would suggest doing that right before serving. So if I'm gonna make this in the morning, I will add those last two things when I serve it in the evening. That's another thing that you can do to rehydrate this dish, and we'll talk about that at the end of this video. So for now, this is what it should look like. Then I'm gonna go into the fridge and get my last two ingredients. So we're gonna use grated Parmesan cheese. Make sure it's actual Parmesan cheese, not the fake stuff. Um, you can also add it shredded, or you could shred it yourself. And I like to do a really thin layer uh, over the entire surface. So just a thin layer over the whole thing is kind of how I measure out how much is good for the amount of rice that I made. And the same thing goes for the heavy cream or half and half, whatever you decide to use. Uh, heavy cream is a lot heavier than half and half. Half and half is half milk, half cream. This one is all cream. So um, probably not the best for the waistline, but it's definitely the best for risotto. <laughs> And that's the texture that you want the risotto to be. So you want it to be almost like a loose porridge. You'll notice that as further we get into this video, it's just gonna get thicker and thicker and thicker because it's gonna continue to absorb all the liquids in here. And so that's something that you wanna keep in mind, especially if you're gonna be serving until later. So this is what the final product should look like. And there you guys have the finished product. I like to garnish the top with additional Parmesan and some chopped um, Italian flat leaf parsley. 
Um, it just makes it look so much cuter. And like I told you guys, this can be a vegetarian or vegan recipe. You just make your um, respective modifications, whether it's the stock or the cheese or cream substitutes. Um, it should be creamy. It should be very rich. It's intended to be a side dish, but it can very well be a main course. And there you guys have it, mushroom risotto. Now, here are a couple of fun facts or ideas. It is risotto, so the concept of risotto is basically slow cooking arboreal rice with a broth and then stirring in something either cheesy or creamy at the very end. So the possibilities are endless. You guys could add many different things to this dish and customize it however you want. A couple of reminders, it does not freeze well because it is a starchy grain. So you wanna be really cognizant of your serving size or how much you're actually going to be making because it does kind of double, I would say even a little bit more than double in volume. It does reheat very well, it does not freeze well. So if you're gonna reheat it, all you need to do is stir in some additional stock, some water, or some more heavy cream and microwave it. I know, it sounds weird, and I swear to you, it's like fresh risotto again. Another thing is you can make it vegetarian or vegan. If there is a milk or cream substitute that you guys are used to using, um, that's something that you guys can do. Also, you can leave out the white wine. It is not necessary. It does add a flavor profile to it, but it is absolutely not necessary. Without it, it still tastes very good. Don't forget to pull out that bay leaf because if someone chomps on that, it's gonna be Pretty, pretty herby. Uh, and what else can I tell you? Oh, mushrooms. If you can't find cremini or portobello mushrooms, use white mushrooms. Use any kind of mushrooms you find. They will also make this dish absolutely delicious. They won't be as like meaty or hearty. It won't add that um, heavier feeling to the dish, that like that meaty taste to it because they aren't like a darker mushroom, but they will work just as nice. Check the description box below for ingredient amounts, for how to chop them, for directions, and for cooking times. I will have the recipe listed in the description box below, along with the previous Cooking Break with Danny where we made minestrone. That video will also be linked in the description box below. Can we talk about my face for a second? This is like the kitchen face. It looks like I'm sunburned, but it's really because I was in a hot kitchen stirring some more boiled rice for 30 minutes. Anyway, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. All the pertinent information, including my Briogeo apron, just kidding, will be listed in the description box below. Uh, but for now, I think that's it. I love you guys so much, and you know what to do. If you found this video useful, entertaining, and learned something, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, this coffee break is over. Or rather, this cooking break is over because mama's gotta eat some of this risotto. Mm. Yeah, I really gotta go. Bye guys.